Welcome back. I hope you were able to do these the the simple math that I gave you. They were really easy. If you couldn't do it, then <laughs> good luck. Because if you see it on the test, then you'll probably be screwed and you better practice. But yeah, other than that, we'll just get back to these answers. So the wage was $150 per day and the capital rental rate was a dollar a day. So we take a fifth 150 times one and that will give us 150. And capital rental rate is a dollar per day. That will give us a thousand. So the total cost is 1,150. I don't know why this is always lagging. Horrible program. Probably running too many processes. So 1,150. Uh, for B, we have 10 times 150 will give us 1,500, and 1 times 10, which gives us uh, 10, so that will give us 1,510. Uh, C, 150 times 1,000, that will give us, uh, that will give us 150,000. And adult 1 times 1 equals 1. Yes, you can see that I'm horribly trying to uh, do the correct math so I don't embarrass myself. So 150 per day times 100, that give us 15k I think. Yeah, my math is not great either. So 1 times 10, that will give us 10, 15, 10. So if you got the right answers, give yourselves a pat on the back. Now we'll do wage equals a dollar per day and capital rental rate equals a thousand dollars a day. So one times one, one. Uh, a thousand times a thousand, that'll give us a million. So in total, that's pre pretty much a million and one dollar. And. Uh, next is 1 times 10, which is 10. Uh, you could skip forward if you already know the answers or are confident in your answers because this is like really boring. I agree. It's really boring me too. So 1,000 times 1, 1,000. Uh, 1,000 times 1, 1,000. 2,000. And a thousand, a hundred times one, a hundred thousand times ten equals ten thousand, which gives us ten thousand one hundred. So we can see that in both, uh, in both this part and this part, the lowest cost would be A here, and uh, this will be the most economically efficient method. And for this part, it's 2,000. That will be the most economically efficient method. So that's that. Enough with the lagging. <laughs> and now we're going to talk about information and organization. So production, a firm organizes production by combining and coordinating productive resources using a mixture of two systems, the command system and the incentive systems. Now these things are pretty much word for word. You got this already. Command system, managerial hierarchy. When you work at McDonald's, you see all those uh, supervisors and those people that are making the burgers and the fries. Well, that's a managerial hierarchy. The command is passed downward through the hierarchy and info feedback is passed upward. When uh, the when the when the dude or when the McDonald's employees, I'm using burger example, McDonald's examples again. I don't know why. Probably because I grew up on that stuff. But yeah, when the cashier is having a problem with a, with a customer, then he'd probably refer back to the the supervisor. Let the supervisor handle this. And when the supervisor needs something to be done, then he will talk to the employee, and the employee will probably do it, or also get fired. So these systems are relatively rigid and it can have many layers of specialized management. So that's command systems. Incentive systems is a method of organizing production that uses a market-like mechanism to induce workers to perform in ways that maximizes profit. So for example, a dream vacation paid by the company. That sounds great, doesn't it? And uh, well, the financial system, financial crisis in 2008, 
those investment bankers that were dealing in subprime subprime mortgages before before the market crashed uh, they were actually making huge bonuses uh, they didn't really think about the consequences of what they were doing so what they did is they were selling these uh, unsafe they were selling these unsafe um, mortgages well pretty much they were, they were building houses and then they wrapped those houses into uh, wrapped those mortgages into a big investment and sold them off as a supposedly safe investment and that's the idea of an incentive system because they were making a shitload of money and that will just give them the incentive to do the work that they were given well yeah but that's a very good detour but other than that mixing the systems um yeah you know that i'm a geek when i talk about crap that's not really relevant but well it's kind of relevant but mixing the systems most firms uses a mix of command and incentive system to maximize profit they use command when it is easy to monitor performance or when a small deviation from the ideal performance is very costly. So probably, yeah, the McDonald's examples, if uh, there are no supervisors or managers, who knows what the hell will happen, right? Now, they use people will use incentives whenever monitoring performance is impossible or too costly to be worth doing. So for example, investment banks, uh, when you're dealing in stocks and stuff, uh, what they will do is they'll offer big bonuses if you do well if you're uh, so if you're a mutual fund manager then probably uh, if your fund do well then you'll get a big bonus if it doesn't then you don't right it's simple as that <laughs> so the principal agent problem now uh, this is a problem of devising compensation rules that induces an agent to act in the best interest of the principal so, for example, the stockholders of a firm are the principals and the managers of the firm are the agent. Another example is the owner of the store is the principal and the worker for the store are the agents. Now, there are uh, three ways to coping with the principal agent, uh, agent problem. And this is ownership, incentive pay, and long-term contracts. And that will be something that we'll discuss in the next video. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.